The courtroom was packed again today for day 15 of the Alec Murdoch murder trial. Inside of the courtroom, testimony is still going on up until just a few minutes ago. They're taking a short break right now. The prosecution called a number of witnesses to the stand today, including a former employee who was very familiar with the family's habits and routines. Our team coverage continues right now from the Colladin County Courthouse. We'll start with Raphael James and Roth, the Murdoch's housekeeper, was on the stand for a good part of the day. She was, Ann, and she delivered some pretty powerful, impactful testimony today on the stand. She knew that family very well. She was intimately connected with them and the goings on of Moselle. In court today, she was on the stand. Her name is Blanca Simpson. She told the court that uh, she arrived at Moselle shortly after the deaths of Maggie and Paul the next morning and says when she got there, she found some things out of place that struck her as very odd. The dinner she cooked the night before had been put away in the fridge, pots and all. She said normally that wasn't the case. They just leave everything out on the stove. And Maggie's pajamas, they'd been set out neatly in the doorway of the laundry area. Something else she found to be odd. Blair Sable is here as well and Blanca Simpson says that she worked so closely with Maggie Blair that she became somewhat of a confidant to her. Well, Roth, yeah, in addition to some really intimate details about how the Murdoch family lived, Blanca Simpson also testified that Maggie Murdoch was aware of the family's financial issues to some extent before her death. Simpson recalled a conversation that she had with Maggie a few months earlier about the $30 million lawsuit that the family was facing. That's in reference to the boat crash Alec Murdoch and his son Paul were connected to. Simpson said this was distressing to Maggie because she said they didn't didn't have enough money to cover those costs. What was she anxious about? She said she knew the amount of money that they were asking, but she felt that Alec was not being truthful to her with regard to what exactly was going on with that lawsuit. She said he doesn't tell me everything. Well, Simpson also testified that when she picked up Maggie's car from the impound lot at Alec's request, she found Maggie's wedding band under the driver's seat. Now, Simpson, she listened to that video that was shot at the kennels just a few short minutes before Paul and Maggie's phones go silent. She testified that she heard Alec's voice in that video, and so did Nathan Tootin, a friend of Paul's just moments ago. He also said that he heard Alec's voice. Now he's the sixth witness to say so. He also had a conversation with Alec about a month after the murders, saying that he felt like he could beat the boat case. Roth? All right, thank you very much, Blair. And we also want to add that the defense actually objected multiple times during Blanca Simpson's testimony, and at times forcefully. Michael Higdon was in the courtroom and joins us now. Michael, what was the basis for those objections? Ruff, they actually decided to take it a step further today, asking for a mistrial at 11.30 a.m. The prosecution was in the, uh, the, in the moment asking, uh, questioning, the, uh, questioning Simpson, where she was testifying about a conversation that she actually had with Maggie, who had said that she was worried about money. Well, that's when the defense objected. When the judge asked for a response, the prosecution ended up asking another question, which is not protocol. This led to an outburst from defense attorney Dick Harputley, and I saw it in the courtroom. Unfortunately, it is not caught on camera, but if you listen, you'll be able to hear him throwing a stack of papers. Anxious about money issues? Uh, uh, your Honor. I object to well, I know you're objected, and, and <laughs> but he is terrified. I understand your objection. And, well, I don't care what you're doing. Uh, there's an objection to the previous question. The objection is sustained. While entertaining the objection, you cannot pose another question. Well, after that, Judge Clifton Newman asked the jury to go to the jury room. Harpootley and then clarified he objected to the conversation because it's hearsay, which ultimately led him to asking for a mistrial. He said before your honor ruled, was she concerned about money or wasn't she concerned about money? He testified, which is to hearsay, I would move for mistrial. I think it's unduly prejudicial based on the last three weeks we've heard of financial 
uh, uh, misconduct on the part of the defendant. Well, Harpootlian was claiming even if the judge gave the jury an instruction, you can't, quote, unring the bell about Maggie possibly being worried about money. They ultimately ended up acting out how the questioning would go without the jury present. The judge then said that the defense themselves had already introduced testimony about how the Murdoch family was so loving and a happy family that they didn't have really any issues and therefore that this was a proper response. He ultimately ruled against the defense's objection for a mistrial. The jury was brought back in and the trial continued. Reporting live in uh, Colleton County, I'm Michael Higdon. Uh, Roth, back to you. An FBI supervisor who goes over and investigates uh, cell phone records and analyzes them also took the stand. We'll tell you more about how he says that data and where that data puts Alec Murdoch on the night of the murder. We'll talk to you about that coming up on Live 5 News at 6. In Colleton County, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Roth, thank you. Now, our team coverage will continue this evening at 6. And if you're unable to watch our coverage of the trial, our team of digital journalists has you covered. They will be providing you with real-time updates each and every day of the trial. To find and follow that page, go to live5news.com and click on Live Blog.